Hello, all my neurotech people. This is Dr. Cody Rawl. Today, we'll be talking with Ryan Tanaka of the Neuropod YouTube channel, who's been collaborating with Neuralink to produce informational videos on their implantable Neuralink device and help with their recruiting. We'll be talking about his experiences around Elon Musk, Lex Friedman, implantable BCI, what it's been like to interact with Neuralink as a company. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for coming on Tech for Psych. I've been watching your Neuropod episodes over the years, and I just think that they've offered such a unique insight to what's going going on in invasive neurotechnology as well as their competitors. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about the channel and the work that you've been doing? Sure. Um, I started the channel a few years ago because I was so inspired by Neuralink's mission to solve debilitating brain and spinal cord injuries. Over time, I've looked into the technology that they're developing. Um, it's a very invasive implant approach. Um, and fortunately have gotten to know some of the employees. They're excited about what I'm doing with the channel. I'm excited about the work that they're doing. And so, yeah, just that excitement about the future that they're building has allowed me to continue creating content about their company. Well, I think people um, are just fascinated by Neuralink because being founded by one of the most famous people on the planet, Elon Musk, as well as this brain computer interface field just developing before our eyes. I know I've had an interesting viewpoint talking about these technologies for years. Um, and I wanted to ask you what you thought about as far as brain computer interface technology companies, because I know you went to go visit Kernel as well. We were going to discuss some of the differences between the two companies. But first off, what is that like interacting with a company that has such a rock star, just global household name like Elon Musk, does that affect the company itself or do they have their own culture and their own ways of doing things outside of his influence? I would say he has quite a bit of influence. Uh, the company is still quite small or at around 300 employees. His influence is outsized at that company relative to his influence at like Tesla or SpaceX, let's say. Tesla, for example, has... 170,000 or 100, around 200,000 employees. SpaceX has around 10,000. Certainly like his way of doing business and operating influences how fast the company is going, the decisions that they're making. One of the other things that I found is, although this is a different uh, industry that he's working on, a lot of the things that he's learned with technology or how to manage engineering teams, like a lot of those skills translate to what he's doing at Neuralink. I've found that they're building a rock star team. Like that's one of the things that I'm most excited about is the credentials and experience and, and mindset, like the passion that these people have that are working at Neuralink. It's really felt. What was that like going to go visit for a Neuralink event and just being around that culture, that energy? The main takeaway that I had was how passionate and how smart the Neuralink team is. They're really wanting this to be an available BCI for everybody. Every decision that they make is going for scale. They want to build their own surgical robots so that these can be implanted at scale. I mean, it is literally everything that they're doing. That was cool to see. Like, I think uh, there's a lot of brain interface companies that are working on wearable headsets because they're wanting to go for scale. Neuralink is still wanting to go for scale, but it's an invasive approach. Right. Obviously, there's some criticism there because, I mean, any type of surgery where you are tampering with the central nervous system, it has its own immune system there are concerns for infection, that type of thing. So what did you see from your end, how they're trying to address this? If they truly are going mainstream, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a big hurdle to overcome, I think, convincing people to be able to get surgery for this type of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, I think at the beginning, like their focus is so much on helping people with medical conditions, um, like debilitating medical conditions. And so because of that, like the people who have those, they're willing to do quite a bit uh, to help their current condition. I think down the road, fortunately, it will be people, the people who will get Neuralink are the ones who are so inspired 
happy about the prospect of being able to like play video games with just their mind or do things that some other folks may not find as valuable, but they think it's so interesting that they're willing to be one of the first and they just, they weigh the pros and cons of doing so and find that they would be okay with being like one of the initial non-medical use guinea pigs. And at the event, was most of the focus on people that have disabilities or was there much talk about going more to the general population? Medical was the primary uh, thing that people were looking at, that the team was concerned about. Um, Elon even specifically mentioned that he thinks that Neuralink is going to be working on these things for at least a decade, um, maybe two. So take us through this getting an invite to go to the event and how that happened and what your experience was like actually going and attending the the launch event. One of the employees reached out to me just from having the channel. He, he sent an email saying that he likes what I'm doing, particularly it had been helpful with recruiting, like getting candidates uh, to fill their pipeline. So because of that and he had found that there were many other employees who were also supportive. He said like, okay, we're going to try to push for you to get an invite. And then when the event was about to happen, they had sent a thing internally. Who, who should we invite? I, I was told that there's like a Slack group that had messages supporting us or supporting me. So it was great to be able to attend. I, I think the, the media was quite limited. Like, the only people that I found had YouTube channels that I knew of were Lex Friedman and I, and everybody else was either like studying something related to the field of BCI for their doctorate program, or they were working at Neuralink. I didn't realize and, uh, Lex Friedman was there. Did you get a chance to talk to him at all? I did. Yeah. Um, chat briefly. Like, I think I was the first person that uh, talked to him like he came into the door and basically w went straight to the bar and then I was I was right in front of the bar so yeah I got to talk with him for a little bit and he's like the exact same person that I see on screen as in person um so that's that's cool to see I imagine he was really interested in uh obviously the brain computer interface aspect of it, but he is an AI expert, is he not? And integrating that is a part, a big part of what's going on. Right. Yeah, that's true. Like I think down the road with after, after working on these medical conditions, you know, this is kind of the prime motivation for Elon to start Neuralink was to help make sure that humanity has like a, a way to mitigate the AI risk of AI becoming so much smarter than humans and therefore doing things that we wouldn't necessarily want. And also like trying to make sure that malicious people equipped with this incredibly powerful AI tool to not be able to completely take over somebody else's life with, with that power. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think that a lot of these brain computer interface technology companies have been talking about that recently. And you've uh, you know, touched on there are actually some competitors to Neuralink, uh, Kernel Neuroscience being one of them. I think that maybe you're one of the very few people on the planet who's visited both sites. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, the differences between the companies. Uh, maybe we can start with the philosophy of, of why they created the technology. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that I've found after starting the channel was in covering a lot of these BCI companies, like the companies really form because of one main idea, or sometimes in the it's it's two ideas, but most of the time it's one main idea that the founder has. That idea is the reason the company exists. Then they just form this company because it's the standard process of getting other people to be able to work together on that idea. In the case of Kernel, the pathway that they're going to take and the future that they have in mind or is guided so heavily by that core idea. That core idea came from Brian, who has basically found 
that every decision and everything that occurs in our world is based on our brain and we know so little about it. And that's crazy. You know, to me, that's an admirable idea. Um, it's crazy that we know more about how our car is and the current state of our car. Like, But when we ask those comparable questions about our brain, we don't really know. Hopefully, like Colonel is able to be successful in creating a future where we are measuring how our brain is doing and what our brain is doing. I think yeah. Neuralink wants to enable a lot of those things too. But the core idea that like built Neuralink and caused Elon to want to start Neuralink was the AI risk mitigation and helping people with debilitating brain and spinal cord problems. It is a bit of a different philosophy. And I know I went to go visit Colonel at one point too. And Brian Johnson asked me what my assessment of the landscape was. And I kind of did my best to summarize what was going on in the EEG world. And it doesn't really compare to the data fidelity that a uh, colonel could get from FNURs, especially as far as blood flow goes. But um, as far as this other famous meeting between Elon and Brian before the companies were founded, did did uh, did Brian touch on that at all and, and why they decided to go a wearable route rather than perhaps teaming up with Elon to do Neuralink or founding their own invasive BCI technology company? He, he said that he and Elon talked at a conference about potentially collaborating. Um, the little that he said was basically, they found that that wasn't the path forward. Initially, Colonel was working on an invasive approach, or an invasive BCI. Um, there was a doctor that told him that there's sometimes like a a new technological breakthrough that upends what people think is possible. Um, and they felt that that was what was becoming the case with a non-invasive approach BCI. Therefore, like at that time, it was kind of a shock to Brian, like, okay, we need to change the, we need to bet the company on a move to non-invasive BCI because that's what everybody in the mainstream is going to be willing to get. And he, that's, that's like their main goal is to uh, create a BCI that's mainstream where people can measure the data about their brain. Yeah. I, I, Brian's said that he'd like to see BCI in every household by 2030. Do you, after seeing Neuralink and Kernel have any opinion on how quickly they would actually be able to implement that? I think with kernel, I think the primary issue is going to be manufacturing. I think that's probably going to be the most difficult challenge, manufacturing at scale. In the case of Neuralink, like there's so many technical challenges to overcome and the initial use is going to be all medical re related. So because of that, um, I think like it would not get to major scale until a couple decades from now. There's something to be said about the depth of impact that any one of these initial releases could have, or if you have Neuralink implants that drastically affect the people whose lives they were implanted in, in a positive way, but there's fewer of them and you just multiply the product of those two compared to like the, the depth of impact that another product might have times the volume that that has is like, what? Which one is a greater product? That that's probably the thing that matters the most. Yeah, sometimes it's not fair really to compare the two in a certain sense because they're fulfilling different needs of society. Is there anything exciting uh for Neuropod coming up that we can look forward to? Any episodes upcoming? Uh I just finished voicing over an update episode. So I'm gonna be editing that video and it should be out in a few days. Several other videos that I've scripted about 50%. Those will also be coming, but I'm, I've, I've been finding that there's not enough news to do an update episode every single month. And so I really want to like do episodes that will last a long time on YouTube and will be really informative for anybody within the next five to 10 years. Like if they're just curious about what is Neuralink, 
they they can find that in a nicely summarized video that's on our channel. Well, I think that you're doing an excellent job of just showing people a inside look of what's going on in these companies. And as BCI becomes more well-known, people are going to have a lot of questions. So uh, I really appreciate the work that you've been doing. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that.